the people so I just got back from watching Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and oh yeah before I forget yes this video does have spoilers in it so don't watch this if you don't want anything ruined so you know the drill oh so yep I've been really looking forward to this movie like um, the first two Guardians movies are great man holiday special is also really good even though it's just 40 minutes long and all that and big james gunn fan too because he also did the suicide squad and peacemaker which are both great too so again a lot of reasons to look forward to this other than oh it's just not a marvel movie just like no like i'm thinking about unlike quantum mania where i only saw that because it's marvel Oh, I guess because I wanted to see Kang, I guess. Here, I wanted to see it because I wanted to see the Guardians, these characters specifically. So, that's already a plus. And, um... So, normally I go through the plot just so... so sometimes when I describe the plot, I'll, I find... Wait, that doesn't really make sense, but... I'm hoping this isn't the case for this one, so... Oh... So this movie takes place sometime after Endgame and I guess Love and Thunder is thrown in there too and Holiday Special. After all that, and so you know Gamora's died in Infinity War and then through some time travel stuff they used, they brought another version of her back. So is Gamora's back, kinda, sorta. But um, yeah, so, so the rest of the Guardians are on Nowhere. They're on their home base after Holiday Special established that that's their new HQ now. And they're hanging out, d doing all right things. things. Um, oh, Cosmo's there too. And uh, then Adam Warlock busts in. It's crazy, like, crazy to think that Volume 2 set him up. We thought he was going to come in Infinity War, but took... Volume 2 came out years ago, man. It took a long time to get to here, but here he is. This and kicks their butts, and he attempts to take Rocket, but they stop him. And I don't remember exactly what he, what they were saying, but something happens to Rocket that, that... I can't remember. Like, there's a lot of information they give about Rocket, like what, what happened inside his chest, but he's dying specifically generally speaking and he's dying and, and he's get might die in two days and so the, they of course got to go help him um, and they go into his past to figure out what exactly is wrong with him as the movie keeps going rocket consistently has these flashbacks throughout to when he was not when he was born but like what like the whole like anytime he would talk about like the experiments that were going on around him and his like code name 89p13 like we see all that and, like the friends he made with those other animals well, there's a uh there's lila there's floor and there's teeth like they all came up with those names themselves and and those flashbacks are really good and, and cgi is really good too like I was, okay one thing real quick the cgi in this is really good like there is uh, i hate to bash on quantum mania because i didn't hate that movie but the cgi in that one was uh, maybe it's a too bit bit of a too harsh of a word but pitiful well but um here there isn't a single moment i can think of where i was like oh that looks fake so that's that's immediately a plus and then of course or as rocket tries in those flashbacks rocket tries to escape with his friends but he finds out, like, because he finds out his, the guy who, who experimented on him, the high evolutionary, like, he wants to create this whole new society. He, he like, the, the, quote, perfect society. And Rocket and his friends were just a bunch of, like, stepping stones to getting there. But now they figure it out, so they gotta dispose of them. Rocket tries to escape with his friends, but they're, they all die. I, and so he scratches the heck out of out of high high evolutionary and eventually escapes. And so, okay, getting back to the present, it, um, 
first the Guardians go to this one place and the Ravagers come in. Apparently Gamora is with them. Um, so, trying to think, because like last time we saw her, she was on Earth. I'm trying to, like... I guess there a lot of time has passed between Endgame and Volume Three. I guess Gamora could have ended up with them. So um, so they so they break into this base so they could find the information they need to save Rocket. It, and um, um, there, there's some cool fight scenes. At one point, there's like a fatal wound to Drax where I legit thought he was gonna die, but then I remembered. Oh wait, there are a few other scenes in the trailers that he needs to be in. So um. You know, that happens, and then they, of course, go to Counter-Earth, that planet that the High Evolutionary has inhabited, all of these new species, which are basically, like, evolved animals with with humanistic future features, you know, like, they stand on two legs, eggs and all that, and... and so they go there, and they eventually figure out how to... How to get into the high evolutionary's base, and they get they get get the information from that one guy. I after Quill kills him, um, and and Quill and Gru are able to get inside I, and escape it because Quill's got a really cool plan. Nebula, Drax, and Mantis accidentally go in. Well, they no, they go in thinking Quill is still in there with Gru, but then they get trapped inside as it starts launching. The High Evolutionary decides to blow up the entire planet. And so he does that. Everybody's able to... The, the, the other Guardians who aren't on that ship are able to get out just fine. And they're able to save Rocket after he has... Um, man, I just immediately thought about... Kind of like a Deadpool 2 thing. You know that scene, those scenes in that movie where Wade would talk to his girlfriend... And after she died, like kind of like that with I, Rocket has those moments with his dead friends. And and again, legit made me think Rocket might die there before eventually they just, they're like, no, there's something else you need to do. Oh, and so Rocket comes back, thankfully. And so then they got to go into that that ship and save Nebula, Drax, and Rocket, but then they find that there are a bunch of kids in there, er, so they gotta save them too. Uh, Kraglin ends up coming in. Apparently nowhere here has these has these thrusters behind it that can help it move through space, so that's kind of cool. And he finally masters using that arrow, that Yondu's old arrow, so that's a nice... I was really hoping that would happen. And... Cosmo uses her, his telekinetic powers too to help out, and um, eventually they all fit, all decide to work together to save all the kids and even all the animals too ooh, that were being experimented on. And Rocket, after after so long, like like hating that everybody was calling him a raccoon, he like finally figures out, oh, that's what he is, and all that, and finally calls himself Rocket Raccoon. And so, and they all, all the, the te whole team beats the crap out of the High Evolutionary and <laughs> rips his face off up. Like, it makes more sense if you've seen the movie. And um, it's kind of kind of scary. And I just remembered Adam. A Adam's in this too. Like, honestly, my only gripe I could think of is that Adam barely had any screen time after Volume 2 set him up as a big deal. It'll, and, um, um, but yeah, Adam gets injured and Drax is, X saves him. Um, or was it Groot? I think it was Groot that saved him. Um, and Quill almost dies, but Adam saves him too. Another moment where I thought one of the Guardians was about to die there. And then, so... I think going in, we all thought somebody was going to die. Like, we all thought that because, like James Gunn has talked about, this is the last Guardians movie and all that. Then he's going to work on DC. But surprisingly, no. Nobody did. Well, the only real... Like, yeah, no main characters die, which surprised me. But the conclusions they had were up were pretty nice, actually. Hey, 
earlier in the movie, Mantis mentioned that Quill sort of, like, he was abducted right after his mom died. And the only other relative he had on Earth is his grandfather. And he never thought about going back to Earth to meet him. And so now he finally decides he's going to do that. Stop running away and all that. Rocket is also elected the new leader after... Like, I even thought about Infinity War when Thor mistakenly named him the leader. So he was unintentionally foreshadowing that, I guess. Um, Groot and Nebula stay with with Rocket. Oh, and Drax, too. Drax finally dances, too, in that one scene. And Mantis also decides she's going to do her own thing, too, after being... And having Ego tell her what to do, having the Guardians tell her what to do. She's going to figure out her own path. And Gamora, like Quill has been trying his best to bring make Gamora the way that he remembers her. Like being his, his girlfriend and all that. But eventually he just accepts that that's not this Gamora. She has her own thing. She has her own thing she wants to do. And he, he finally accepts that. Which, yep, I am... I was curious how they were going to do that. Like, are they going to, like, redo the romance? But, nope. Nope, Gamora does her own thing. Because this is a different character, essentially. So, honestly, really well thought out there. And, um... Oh, and also, oh, in that one credit, one of the credits scene, Groot is, like, insanely big. I didn't even realize he could get that big. And... Yeah, I think that's about it I could think of. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, there are a few jokes I can mention, but, and, and, oh, they also dropped the F-bomb in this, which, that, is that the, I know it's the first time a Marvel movie has dropped that without, like, cutting it off, but is that the first time Disney has ever dropped it? I'm not sure, but, yeah, I, I thought that was kind of like, oh, cool. <laughs> well, that's kind of fun. And so did I enjoy this movie? Well, judging by how I've been describing the plot, yes, I, I did enjoy this movie. It um, wasn't exactly what I expected. Again, I thought somebody was going to die. I was like fully preparing myself for that, uh, considering how heartbreaking Yondu's death was. But nobody died. I, and they actually had a more fitting conclusion for them, which I was like, all right, I'm, I'm fine with that. And the more, the more I think about it, I'm like, all right, that's actually not bad. And, and th like they, they, they were saying this is going to be a lot more focused on rocket. And it definitely is, is like the more, I'm, the more I'm thinking about it. Like when you look at this, these guardians movies as a trilogy, Rocket has the biggest character arc. He starts off as somebody who's like selfish, only cares about the money, kind of kind of like Han Solo. Oh, and then he eventually, he, like in that scene when Quill's like talking to him, like, "Hey, Ronan's gonna kill us all. We need to stop him." He's like the last person to like stand up. Then he go to Volume Two. He's being an a hole to everybody, but. And eventually Yondu, of course, exposes uh, is how he's just trying. He's just acting mean because he doesn't want to get attached to anybody. And he sheds his first tear here when Yondu dies and he has that funeral. Well, like that's the shot the movie ends on him tearing up. Now in volume three, we like fully understand where he comes from and why he is the way he is. Is and that moment when he decides to save all the kids and the animals where he says like i'm done running like yep that that pretty much resolves his whole arc and also when he again hated everybody calling him a raccoon and now he like fully embraces yep my name's rocket raccoon and so he definitely has the most dynamic character arc out of all of them i was thinking about like I thought, like, Peter Quill would have, but the more I think about it, I guess Volume 2 sort of resolved most of his, his... And this one sort of, like, added in some extra, like, oh, yeah, what about his grandpa? Uh, so, yeah. So, 
not much else I can think of. But uh, yep, this like I I already knew I was gonna like this movie because this has been the most positively received Marvel movie on the internet that I've seen since Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, so immediately I was like, oh, thank goodness this movie is actually good. Uh, definitely the best Marvel movie since No Way Home, I would say. Well, I, I liked Wakanda Forever. That that one was really good. So, and uh, I think this might be better than Wakanda Forever, just slightly. In terms of the of, of the all the Guardians movies in general, the more I thought about it, I think this is my least favorite of the three. My order for goes volume two, then volume one, then volume three. So it's definitely my least favorite, but it's still really good. Like it's still a really good conclusion for these characters, uh, and a nice. Like farewell for James Gunn as he goes on to work for DC. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And, oh, another interesting thing I noticed was that after the last credit scene, you with Quill with his with his grandpa, uh, the movie like ends like shows a text saying the legendary Star Lord will return. I found that interesting because with the other two they say the Guardians of the Galaxy will return but this one just says Star Lord so I thought that was interesting and I'm really curious to see where else he goes uh, but yeah I'm, I'm excited for whatever that whatever that happens and what, what, wherever we see him next I'm assuming in like Avengers Kang Dynasty or something but um yeah, I would give this movie, on a score of 1 to 10, I would give this movie a strong 8. eight so, yep, oh, I would definitely recommend this movie. It definitely go see it. And, yep, that, those are my uh, fresh thoughts on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So, peace!